Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you an alternative to that uh, segmented control that I did in the last video. Um, instead, we're going to look at creating buttons which give a similar effect. So basically like hiding and showing. But the advantage is that we can look at some animation in the way that it can transition between the different views. So it looks a little bit more fluid. So I'm going to start off by creating a new project. I'm going to buzz through this pretty quick. So if you haven't learned how to create a new project yet, just look back at my previous uh, videos. But I'm just going to go quickly go through that. Okay, and set my device. It's a modern device so I can see what it looks like. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a struct. Again, I did this in the previous video. Uh, within the struct, we're going to have two views. The first is the form view one. So this is going to have a V stack. It's going to have some text. And I'm just going to style that V stack a little bit. So set the frame width, set a background image, etc. So frame min width, max width, I'm going to set that to the boundary. And set the minimum height. And from there, set the title, set the background color to bar, which is like a little gray color, and set a corner radius. And then I'm going to copy and paste that to create form view two. So this is just a demonstration purpose. So obviously, you'll expand these a little bit more for your actual application. But then you can see it's form view one displaying now or form view two. So it's made them slightly different so you can see the difference between the two. So as we have our two forms which we're going to show, we need to start actually constructing our buttons. But before that, we need to create a state. So this state will be used to decide which button has been pressed and then what's going to be shown. So var state, I'm just going to call it index. And initially we're going to set this to zero. Then we'll create a vertical stack and a horizontal stack that sits within that before we start to create our buttons. So H stack and do a little bit of formatting. So I'm going to set the background color. So first of all, I'm going to set this one to black with an opacity of 0.1. Set the clip shape. So it's going to form the background that will be seen between the two buttons. Add some padding as well. Okay, so we can't see anything yet because there's nothing sitting within that H stack. So there's going to be an existing button and there'll be a new button. So this is the part where the magic starts to happen. From now on, it's kind of revision what you've been learning before. So I'm going to create that button. It's going to have a closure for the action. Inside there, we're going to set an animation and I'm going to use the spring animation. So you can explore some of these others uh, if you like. Within that animation, I'm going to set the index to zero for this initial button. And then of course, I've got to finish this off by saying, well, what's inside the button? So I want to display a text and I need to do some formatting here. So what I'm actually going to do is create a ternary statement. So I'm going to say if the index is equal to zero, then set the color to white, otherwise set it to gray. So this is kind of like a little if statement within the properties. I'm going to set the font weight to bold, give it some padding for the top. And also set the size of the frame, the same we did for the previous frames. Uh, we're going to use the width of the complete frame. So using the UI screen dot main dot bounds, uh, but we're going to make it half that width. So minus 50, but this time we're going to divide it by two just because we're going to have those two buttons. Now that, that text is defined, we can focus on the actual button background. Uh, we're going to use a similar ternary statement, but this time we're going to flick between the green color and clear. So it will be transparent and just show up the background when it's not selected. So the same ternary statements. So it's green if it's true, else it'll be clear. Finally, we'll set that clip shape. So it looks like capsules. Now that we have our completed first button, we can copy and paste this to become our new button and then just make a few changes and make sure that the colors are um, the opposite. So we need to make sure that we change the text obviously from existing to new. We'll change the increment so it changes uh, to one instead of zero. 
Make sure we change these conditions as well. So they're the opposite. So from now, if I test it within my view, I can see that working. I'm not quite happy with the way that animation works. So I'm going to adjust some of the settings within that spring. I'm going to change the response time. I make that 0 0.8. And you can have a little play with this yourself and see what you think. Change that dampening fraction, 0 0.5, and also the blend duration as well. Again, you can play with these. Um, maybe it's just my eyes, but I'm just trying to adjust them to get a, a bit more of a fluent change. I'm going to copy that down into the other spring action as well. And the last thing we need to do is to create some logic just to hide and show those different views depending on what's selected. Let's add a comment there into my code and then we can start our if statement. So if the index is equal to zero, then I want to show form view one. Else, I want to view the form view two. Okay, so we can see that working in our simulator and launch the full project just so you can see the final product, what we created. So, so you can make modifications to this depending on what your application is.